Please note that anything or everything I say in this video, as in all of my videos, could be wrong. This is a graphical representation of an atom. Protons and neutrons are shown in the center, and electrons are shown orbiting the nucleus. The actual structure of atoms is different, but this representation is useful in understanding magnetism. The electrons in this image are much larger than the real-life ratio between protons and neutrons compared to electrons in the real world. Electrons are very tiny compared to protons and neutrons. The electromagnetic force is an interaction between charged particles, such as the electrons and protons in this atom. The electromagnetic interaction between charged particles in the atom produce a tiny electromagnetic field. Since atoms spin, they therefore have an axis, and they therefore have two poles. We can call these two electromagnetic dipoles north and south, since Earth has a magnetic field, and the poles of which are near the north axis and the south axis of Earth. All atoms made out of matter spin, therefore they all have a north magnetic pole and a south magnetic pole. The amount of magnetic force is very tiny for each atom. Looking at a ferrous, non-magnetized metal, the axes of the atoms within the metal are chaotically aligned. The poles do not all point in the same direction. When a large percentage of atoms in the ferrous metal do align their axes in the same direction, the electromagnetic force within those atoms cumulate and create a much stronger magnetic field. The more atoms that line up, the stronger the magnetic field. Thermal agitation makes the alignment of the atoms in the metal more difficult, which makes the cumulative magnetic field weaker. This is why supercooled magnets are very strong. Also, the type of ferrous metal dictates how many atoms, on average, will align their axes. The question then is, how does one get a large percentage of the atoms in a ferrous metal to align their spins in the same direction? The simplest way is to subject the metal to a strong electromagnet. The south poles of the atoms will flip to meet the north pole of the electromagnet, and the north pole of the atoms will flip to meet the south poles of the electromagnet. Given a strong enough electromagnet, enough of the atoms will remain aligned to generate a magnetic field in the metal once the electromagnet is turned off. This is also why you can magnetize an iron nail by rubbing it against a permanent magnet in the same direction. It causes a percentage of atoms to align themselves in the same direction creating a cumulative electromagnetic force in the nail. Aligning the spin of atoms does not mean the metal, now a magnet, has been filled with energy that can be used to perform work, except perhaps some collateral heat. To use a magnetic field to perform work, a source of energy must be added. Magnetic fields convert one form of energy into other forms of energy. One takes a magnetic field, such as a permanent magnet or even an electromagnet, a coil wrapped around ferrous metal with a charge from a battery power source. One can then take a needle that is not magnetic. I have a bunch of um, cell repair needles here, none of which are magnetic. As far as I know, they don't pick up any of their kin, and carefully rub it in one direction. Want to be gentle, because if I bang it against the magnet, the atoms that are aligned by the magnetic field will become unaligned by my slamming the needle against this. <clears throat> the only energy that is being applied to the little needle is kinetic energy. There is no such thing as magnet energy, and in, therefore there is no magnet energy being applied to the needle.
Unfortunately, this takes a while before a needle will be magnetized. You can also just leave it on there for a few hours and the needle will be magnetized. The energy that is being applied to the needle is kinetic energy, that is heat. And once the heat dissipates, there'll be no energy imparted on the needle or the magnet from my hand. Magnet, mag, electromagnetic force is a force, it is not energy. I doubt very much that a magnetic traction came. Oh, there we go. If I wanted to unalign the atoms that I just aligned, I can heat this up and the thermal agitation will scramble the alignment again. Anyhow, at no time was magnetic energy applied to this needle. There is no such thing. All that it happened is that the atoms in this needle, some of them, lined up. And the only energy used was kinetic energy.